Morning, everybody. Zach Meyer with Meyer Property Maintenance. Uh, it was a rainy day today, so it was time to do some maintenance and some greasing and some pressure washing. And ironically, this thing was just pressure washed, but you know, you clean everything off and then you track, and there's always some junk that's built up back there. Try to get it off best you can. Point is, after every use, gotta be pressure washed. Gotta keep the undercarriage clean track adjustments correct, um, greasing the 10,000 pins on the boom and the machine itself, that's it's constant uh, pretty much after every use. Um, so today I wanna talk a little bit about um, brush clearing, um, you know, what you can expect from the finished product, because um, sometimes there's misconception on, you know, what it's gonna look like when it's done. Um, the kind of material that it can go through, um, you know, this thing has been getting used on and off all year and, um, uh, I just kind of want to, you know, clear the air, uh, for anybody who hires me or inquires about brush clearing, what it's capable of, what it's not capable of and what you're going to have left over. Um, you know, there's photos on the Facebook page. I've done some little demonstration videos, I did have a job that I was filming and I ended up having to go down a really steep embankment and it was just nervous as it was. So I turned the camera off because, uh, yeah, the machine in my life is a little more important than filming and, you know, could not lose my focus and something could happen. So I didn't film that. I do have a job coming up. Uh, I am going to do a little bit of filming and some lights, you know, some light clearing. Um, but anyway, uh, this is a Cymatec DHL 80. It is from Italy. It's an Italian manufacturer. Um, it's got a, I guess a 34 inch cut. Um, it weighs with the, uh, the bracket around 500 pounds. Um, so yeah, you don't want to stand under it for whatever reason. If the hydraulics were to fail on the machine, yeah, you're probably going to break your foot or your leg or whatever else you have underneath it. So it is a heavy attachment and is an expensive attachment. Um, it is good for, I'm going to say productively, if I'm productively doing a job and I can just keep moving, you know, through the job without really having to sit there and grind stuff down, I'm going to say three and a half inches. Um, if I have, you know, a four inch sapling that's in front of me, is it going to take it out? Yes. Is it going to take a little longer? Yes. Is it going to be stress on the machine? Of course. This is a very destructive attachment. Um, there's nothing cheap about running it, uh, especially, you know what I mean, when it comes to, um, you know, wear and tear on the machine, the hydraulics. Um, very costly, um, you know, to replace pumps and, you know, even lines and stuff really aren't that cheap. Um, you know, nowadays. Um, so it's abusive on the machine, which is, you know, kind of, uh, you know, how you kind of charge. Um, I'll charge anywhere from, if it's super light stuff and I can get at, in and out of there, you know, really not putting an entire day, um, you know, I got to get at least 900, you know, it, to a regular days of running costs is around $1,200, depending on where you're located and how far the drive is and, you know, all that good stuff. Um, but what it's going to do is uh, it's going to get everything down onto the ground. Um, you know, anytime you do brush clearing, there's always logs and rocks and there's other stuff that's in there that this is not going to chew up. So if you have areas in your yard and you're like, I want to extend the yard, I want more of my property back, which is generally why people will call me for something like this is they want to reclaim property that's been lost through the years that hasn't been maintained. Um, this is a great tool. Um, and the reason I like having this on the excavator versus having it on a skid loader, which is what a lot of guys will typically run those brush mowers with the blades. Look, they're great, but they are very limited to the areas that they can get into. Um, you know, this thing can reach out and I can actually push rocks out of the way and stuff like that, either with the dozer blade or sometimes even with the ends of these, um, I can get on embankments. Um, it really is, um, it's really efficient. When you're doing a job because you can find out what's under the ground or what's hidden that you can't see 
with a skid loader, you're basically tracking up to it and you're going to know when you hit something either because it's going to completely stop your unit from spinning, which is crazy pressure on the hydraulic system. You can blow a hose just like that and the day's over. Um, versus with this, I can go in very lightly and I can dust off the top, so to speak, and I can see what I'm looking at. Um, so that's what this thing is great for is that it's, it's really good at getting the job done, but getting it done without breaking anything or causing potential problems. Um, you know, yes, it does happen. You, you know, you might roll over a sharp rock or something and, you know, pray to God that it doesn't, you know, throw a track off or, you know, cut up the track. Uh, these tracks have been holding up pretty well. Haven't really had any issues with, you know what I mean? Running over rocks and causing damage. There is a slit somewhere in this track, but that's actually my fault. Um, because I had a sharp piece of metal on the trailer and it did it, but it, you know, nothing crazy, but if you're going to come in and clear brush, you know, the ground's going to be lumpy. There's going to be rocks. There's going to be, you know, pieces of wood that got, you know, eaten up partially and then it's laying flat on the ground and it's really hard for these teeth to actually get down to where it is and chew it up. Um, essentially you are going to have loose stuff on the ground. Um, unless it's just like all like, you know, briars and like pricker bushes and stuff, which it will just eat it, like eat it right up. Um, and then there's not a problem. So if you're trying to, you know, extend your yard, you want to grow grass, you know what I mean? A lot of times, you know, you are definitely gonna have to do something to the ground after the fact. Um, you're either gonna have to run a Harley rake, which has similarities to this, but what it's designed to do is that it creates good seed bed. Um, you know what I mean? If you look at like this flat, like if you have dirt like that, you're not going to grow grass in it versus when you have chewed up ground, it creates a great seed bed and gives the seed a chance to germinate. So if you are blessed with having a fairly um, non overrun area of brush in terms of rocks and logs, you can get away with running a Harley rake, throwing some seed and some hay down and, you know, throw some sprinkler heads on it and you're going to get some grass to grow in other situations. You might have, you know, a lot of wood chips. There's just, there's just a lot of stuff that's left over from the clearing. There's a lot of rocks or, you know, if you're, you had all kinds of stumps ground down, you have to bring in topsoil. There's no way around it. And the cost of topsoil isn't necessarily our fault as contractors. We're subject to the prices of our suppliers and we can't really change that. But if you're clean, if you spent $1,200 to clear some brush and you're like, I want to make it grass. Well, don't be surprised if the actual prep costs more than actually clearing the brush because there it's tedious work. Um, you know, you got to, you know, get the topsoil, the right amount of topsoil for the area. If you have, you know, an area where you have to put down topsoil, um, you don't want to put down, you know what I'm saying? A little bit. You want to put down like a nice three or four inch layer of topsoil. You want that grass to grow, germinate and mature, and then come back the next year after you've gotten through the winter time. So it's super important to make sure that you use the right amount of topsoil. And it's also important that you use the right amount of seed. You know, if you get somebody who just grabs, you know what I mean? A minimal bag of seed and just runs around, you know what I mean? Just throws a little coating of seed. It's really not helping you out. You want to litter it with seed. You don't want to overseed it to the point where it's just a layer of seed that's completely smothering the ground, but you want a good amount of seed. So there's prep involved after the clearing. So it's basically like a two-step process unless, you know, you're saying, hey, this is my number to clear it. This is my number to, uh, you know, make it grass. And, you know, here you go all in lump sum. I don't try to do that to my customers. What I like to do is break it up for them. So it gives them an opportunity to bounce back from the money they spent and maybe wait, you know, a month or, you know, a couple weeks or whatever. You know, some people are different. Some people just say, give me the number to do everything. You know, don't be shocked. You know what I mean? If it costs $2,500 to clear an area, uh, you know, get some topsoil down if needed and some seed and some hay. And then you know, you're going to have to upkeep with it. You're going to have to water it. Um, you know, I say every single day for two weeks, unless you get like a downpour on a day, you know, don't bother, but it has to stay wet. It has to be the right time of year. Um, you know, spring, fall time's a good year. You can make it happen in the summertime, but you really got to keep it saturated. Um, so that's really, you know, what it comes down to when you're clearing brush 
and then you're trying to reclaim yard or you're trying to get yard back you know if if you just come in there do it cheap and you just you know throw some seed down and hope that it it takes it's just a gamble and you know what i mean it's almost it, it could basically turn into a complete waste of money you can say okay cost five hundred dollars in dirt cost five hundred dollars to you know run the machine for the day and get everything nice and fine and then on top of that you got your seed costs you know an 80 pound bag of seed is like 140 dollars for one bag of seed and i recommend for you know a quarter acre or you know half acre depending on you know the lot and stuff i recommend two of those bags um and then you know you got you know bales of straw for you know seven to ten dollars a bale depending on where you get it at it i'm sure there's places out there that sell it for a little bit more uh this is chester county um everything is expensive around here but you know that is you know the process if you're going to trying to reclaim yard and make it usable ground as in like i want grass and i just you know i want more of my property if you're just going in to maintain an area you know maybe once a year maybe twice a year depending on how much you want that area to be um up kept you know twice a year is you know pretty you know standard in the springtime and then you know later on right before the winter if you're trying to keep it you know keep it down once a year is you know nothing wrong with that um then you're good it doesn't matter you just you know you just want it knocked down and and you know it's no hassle um but there are tons of limitations on skid loaders and there's tons of limitations on even the you know the dingoes and the mt100s and the kubota cl1000s with their brush cutters well a they're limited to what they can cut in amount of time and they also you know they can't go down you know certain hills they can't get down to embankments so this is the best of both worlds it's fast it's powerful i'm able to feel around and you know discover any um you know obstacles logs rocks uh you know metal wire if you <laughs> it's when hit metal wire with this it is going to wrap it up that's why i keep uh bolt cutters in the truck just in case uh we wrap that stuff up uh, you know, we're able to cut it out of there and, you know, move on these, these hammers, um, you know, they're pretty, you know, decent size. I mean, that's my fist and I'm not exactly a little guy. So these are huge hammers. Um, they've been holding up pretty well. Uh, as long as you keep them out of the dirt for the most part and you try not to hit rocks with them, you'll be okay. Um, but you know, uh, this, is great because it's able to cut uh, grass and it's able to do brush as well. When you just have a brush mower, you're more geared towards the lighter stuff, depending on how big the machine is. But then again, when you're talking a bigger machine with a mower head, that machine costs more to own. The unit itself that is cutting costs a hell of a lot more. So therefore the day charge is going to be a lot more. Um, you know, it, it, like I said, it, it really all depends on, you know, what you're trying to accomplish, what your kind, what your budget is. Um, but in terms of efficiency and run costs, this I found is the big, the best bang for the buck. Now, Osma is a, another European company that works, you know, not directly with Symatech, but they are another mulcher distributor, you know, skid steer um excavator you know forestry attachment company and they are coming out with a actual mulcher head so instead of having these flails on there they're actually going to have fixed teeth so they're not going to swing or anything they're going to be solid teeth and they literally bite through and they can do a hell of a lot more to whatever you're trying to do it can do it faster there's a unit they are coming out with that is going to be perfect for this size machine. I believe they're going to go probably for around 15 grand. Um, maybe more, maybe a little bit less. It all depends um, on what, you know, shipping costs and everything else that is involved uh, with that because it's got to come a long way before it even makes it to my shop. But I am looking into it. They're just coming out. Um, you know, my, I, I, depending on how much work I get for brush clearing will all depend on if I decide to uh, go ahead and purchase a unit, um, you know, of that nature. Um, but right now this is doing, you know, great for me. Um, it's doing great for my customers. They've been happy, um, with the work that's been done in terms of clearing and what it's able to accomplish in a day's time there, I, almost every single one of them have been pretty shocked that, you know, I was able to come in in a day and eradicate everything. And also that I forgot to mention, 
competing with other people's prices. So you might look at an area that needs to be cleared and your first thought is I'm going to call a tree service. Now, unless the tree service has, you know, a skid loader with a brush cutter and it's an ideal situation for that machine, they're going to be right in my territory in terms of, you know, what it's going to cost to do that job in a day. If they don't have those tools, they don't have a skid loader or a brush mower, they don't have the right equipment for the terrain, whatever it might be, they're going to be more expensive than me. It's inevitable. And I'd say probably nine times out of 10, most tree services they're going to, you know, have a guy come out and do a job. You know, that company's going to send out three guys, a truck and a chipper. You got to run the chipper. You got three guys. That's three liabilities, three people that could get hurt. There's a whole bunch of factors. They're going to charge more because they have to. Um, they have to pay their guys, which labor isn't cheap right now. And it's probably not going to be ch ever cheap ever again because it's been harder and harder to find um, more people uh, willing to to work. Um with that being said, you know, your typical, you know, days, you know, work with the chipper and three guys most of the time is going to be around, you know, $1,500. Some jobs are going to cost a lot less. It really depends. But typically all the jobs that I've encountered, they would definitely have been a day's work with at least three guys. And a lot of times they'll have a mini loader with a grapple and it'll bring the brush to the chipper. So it's just more fuel and more everything. You know, with this, you get the attachment, you get the machine, and you get just me. And I've been doing just fine that way. Um, I haven't run into anything that I haven't been able to handle. Um, if there was some stuff that needed to be removed, like logs, the customer wanted to remove logs or just old stuff that was way too big for this to cut, you know, then I just, you know, incorporate that. I pretty much will just charge for the fuel and the dumping fee. I really won't even take anything from it. So basically it's like, okay, you know, X amount of logs or, you know, has to come off the property, come over with the dump trailer and the dingo with the grapple, load them in there, take them away. It's really no cost to the customer, at, you know, aside from the f little bit of fuel and, you know, whatever it costs me to get rid of it. Um, because, you know, I already did business on, you know, clearing the brush itself. You know what I mean? Even if it only takes me, you know, two or three hours, you know, the next day or something, that was a job well done for me. I don't need to make anything more off of them. They were happy to hire me and, you know, agree to my price. And I say, hey, look, you know, I'll get rid of it for this. Um, but I've never been told that I've been overpriced. Um, not that, you know, you're going to hear that too often. People are going to admit that they felt you were overcharging. Um, but I feel like for everything that I'm willing to offer um, and just, you know, the whole package, I feel like, I, you know, I, I'm more than fair. I don't want to overcharge anybody. I want everybody to be able to afford the service, you know, to a certain extent, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, you know, and I'll even, you know, I'll work with you a little bit if I can. You know, sometimes it'll be a little wiggle room for you. It really depends on what it is. Um, but I really just wanted to do a informational video on this cutter head, um, you know, with this machine and what it was able to do. Um, like I said, you know, productively through the day, it's good for three and a half inches. When you start getting into four inches and higher, it takes a little bit longer, a little bit harder on the machine. So, you know, that can, fa that can, you know, that can factor a price as well. You know, even if you're charging an extra hundred dollars or something, Hey, if a hose blows and, you know, trying to chew up really heavy stuff, you know, that's at least a hundred plus dollars out of my pocket to go get a hose and, you know, put it in and, you know, the time that I'm standing there doing that. So, you know, that, that's what I'd factor in. Sometimes if stuff is just too big, I don't think it's worth sitting there trying to chew up and just beat down on the stuff. We'll just, uh, we'll just remove it, um, you know, with the machine and the trailer, but 90% of the material that is cleared on any job is staying where it is. There's no removing it. It's not going anywhere. It's staying right where it is. And that's a good thing for nature as well. You're repurposing the ground and, you know, those, those, you know, chips or whatever, if the area is just staying a natural area, it's going to break down and it's eventually going to become soil. You know, the process takes, you know, a little bit of time, you know, years, but that's exactly what happens. So we're also repurposing the ground when we do that as well. So a lot to think about. Um, you know, if anybody is interested in the brush clearing, 
feel free to reach out to me. Um, you know, I can go through the job with you, explain, you know, everything, um, you know, that we would be able to do, uh, depending on the job. So I uh, hope everybody's having a good day. Um, excited about uh, the weekend. Uh, the Phillies are going to the World Series. Not exactly a big baseball guy, but I'm excited for the city and excited to watch it. It's, you know, something special. And obviously the Eagles are 6-0, so I'm happy about that as well. But neither here nor there. Everybody have a great day. Thanks.